Hey guys, welcome back. So after my last video on the Nvidia Shield and some cool things you can do on that device, let me now share with you another five things you can do on your device to really get the most from it. First up, we have Plex. Now I don't mean Plex as a media client. I actually mean Plex as a media server. So right now my Shield is actually acting as a Plex media server. And where is that content? Because you can see I don't have any USB drives or any other media plugged directly into my Shield. Where is that media actually coming from? Well, one of the great things you can do on the NVIDIA Shield is actually mount network storage. So if I go over to my settings, go down to device preferences, go into storage, and here we can see I have one mounted network storage. Now you can mount whichever storage you want. And in my case, I mounted my NAS drive, my Synology NAS drive. So if I click on that now, we can see, first it says unavailable because it does a quick scan. And now we can see it's connected. So if I click on that now, and this means I can now access all of the content on my NAS drive. And we can see, for example, I've got eight gigs of audio, 751 gigs of films that I've previously purchased. So all of that good content is available on my NAS and I can now access it directly on my Nvidia Shield. And not only can I access it from here, if I go back to Plex, let's open that up. And here inside the Plex client, we can see on my home screen, we've got the last film that I previously watched. Let's scroll down. Here's some of the things that have been added from my NAS drive. And here's some of the free content that is available on Plex right now. Now, now, of course, doing an entire setup of Plex is too much for this video. But if you guys are interested in that, then please do leave a comment below and make sure you are subscribed. Let's back out of that. If I scroll down, let's click on more. And here we can see the content that's been accessed from my NAS drive. If I click on films, here we can see all of the content. So if I click on something, we get to see the movie summary. Uh, we can see some of the ratings down here. And of course I can click on play and this will now instantly stream that from my NAS using Plex as the media server and also playing it through the Plex media client. And we can see that's working absolutely fine. And this really is a great film. Let's back out of that. So that's the first cool thing we can do on our NVIDIA Shield, which is to actually use it as a Plex media server. Next up, we have PC game streaming, and I don't mean GeForce Now, I actually mean playing full PC games, but on your NVIDIA Shield. Now, recently I've been playing a lot of Call of Duty Warzone, and wouldn't it just be so great if I could play that on my NVIDIA Shield? Well, guess what guys, if I go over to my library, we can see we have this game stream tile over there. If I click on that, and within a couple of seconds, we are now inside Call of Duty and I'm accessing all of that through my Nvidia Shield. Uh, let's press A and uh, let's just go for quick play. But we can see guys, that just looks amazing. Uh, let's select that. In fact, let me get my keyboard or mouse. All right, so this is now TD UK playing Call of Duty Modern Warfare using a keyboard or mouse through GameStream via the Nvidia Shield Pro through to my PC. Let's see how that works. All right, and here we are. Let's just hope TD UK knows what he's doing. Um, I mean, as I mentioned, I've only recently started playing this, but I really am loving it so far. All right, there's the rest of my team there. No, oh, all right, he's just got hit, so let's... Uh, uh. Nice, good start, okay. <laughs> but we can see that's working absolutely fine. Uh, of course, I'll just edit that kill out. But seriously guys, I mean, how impressive is that performance? Uh, in terms of input lag, in terms of, you know, screen refresh, the Shield Pro can handle this no problem. Uh, uh, take that. Oh, you did, all right. <laughs> but we can see guys, that's working really good until I got killed there, but I really am impressed with how well this can handle game streaming. Now this game is not actually officially supported via game streaming, but I'll show you how you can add that as a manual game. And once they do officially support it, the performance will be even better than what we see now. But I definitely am really impressed with this guys. And you can now actually start enjoying these games on the big screen. So no need to be hunched over your computer, no need to be hunched uh, on your desk. You can now sit back 
on the sofa, but still enjoy PC gaming on the big screen. So I definitely am happy with that. Uh, 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 take that. That's how you do it. So to add in a custom game into your game stream, open up your GeForce experience and go over to shield and then enable this option here, which then actually activates game stream on your device. And you can then click on add and this will then open up file explorer and you can basically navigate to wherever you've installed call of duty modern warfare on my machine i've installed it in games call of duty modern warfare i just select the launcher here select on that click on open and this will then add that to your game stream library so the next time you are on your shield you can open up the game stream app and you'll see this game in there and as mentioned this game is not currently optimized for game stream and once they do go ahead and do that we will see even better performance and overall better gameplay so definitely looking forward to that now one of the best features on the brand new nvidia shield has to be this remote control i mean it feels really nice in the hand i like the fact that it's backlit i love the fact that we have dedicated buttons for play forward rewind I also like the fact that if you do ever lose your remote control, you can actually get your NVIDIA Shield to find it for you. For example, I could say, start the remote locator on the Shield. And you can see it starts buzzing like that. So really great features, guys. Definitely one of the best things about this new device. Now, in terms of negatives, if I had to say one thing about this remote control, I would definitely say it's this button here, this dedicated button for Netflix. Now, some of you obviously may not use Netflix, Others, like me, use Netflix, but don't actually necessarily want a big button for it. So what can we do? Let me show you a very quick thing you can do on your remote control. So this one button actually becomes three. So for example, when I press it once, what happens? We go straight to the care application. If I press the button twice, what happens? It actually starts Netflix. And lastly, if I press and hold, what happens? It starts Plex, guys. So three great features from a single button. Okay, so for this process to work, we need to download a single application, which will help us remap this button to any other feature that we want. Now to get this application, we're going to use an application called Downloader. And let's now navigate to my website, which is http colon forward slash forward slash bit dot ly forward slash tduk. That's me. And then the numbers 2019. Let's type that in and let's click on go. Now, once you get to my website, you wanna scroll down a bit and you're looking for this hamburger menu here. So let's click on that now. Let's scroll down a bit and let's click on downloads. Now inside downloads, you'll find all of the stuff that I previously shared. And I'm hoping when we get down to the dedicated section for Nvidia Shield, we will see the new application there. Okay, let's click on the button remapper. Let's scroll down. And let's click on the green download button. It's actually a very small file, so it should only take a few seconds. But just while we're waiting, guys, if you are enjoying this kind of content, if you want to see more tutorials on the NVIDIA Shield Pro or the second generation Fire TV Cube or your standard Android boxes or even your 4K Fire Stick, then please do subscribe and hit that notification bell because that really is the best way to support my channel. Thank you. Okay, let's click on install. Let's give that a second. We can now click on done. Let's go back to home. Okay, let's now open up the application. So let me press and hold the home key. And let's now start up button mapper. Okay, so this is a key part of the instructions, guys. So before we actually do anything, we do need to enable the accessibility service for button mapper because without this service or without this application having access to that service, none of this is actually going to work. So let's say okay to this. Let's go back to the home key. Let's go over to settings, click on device preferences, scroll down, and we're looking for accessibility. So let's click on that. And here we can see we have button mapper and it currently does not have access. So if we click on that and we want to enable this option, let's click on OK. And as soon as you enable it, it will actually take you back inside button mapper. So without this step, guys, once again, this process is not going to work. So make sure you have enabled it and that'll take you straight back into the application. OK, so this application actually has two tiers. It has a free tier and it has a paid tier. As you can imagine with the paid tier, you get access to a lot more features, a lot more functions. But in this video, because we're only interested in mapping a single button, we can actually get away with just using the free version. So what you wanna do is scroll down and we wanna add a custom button because we wanna tell Button Mapper that when we press this button to then do a certain action or a bunch of different actions. So let's click on that now. Let's click on add buttons. And it's now asking you press the custom button that you want to add to Button Mapper. So I'm gonna press the Netflix button Okay, we can see it's identified that as button 12. Let's click on that now. 
and here you want to click on no thanks but of course guys if you do want to support the developer then you can go for the unlock option and get access to a lot more features but for now let's click on no thanks and there it is guys we now have three distinct actions we can do to give us three separate instructions for this single button the next application we have is the aurora store now if somebody asked me what's one of the first applications you should install on any official android tv device well i would definitely say the aurora store is one of them simply because unlike the standard play store you get on your android tv device which we know is very very limited you only see a very very small subset of applications the aurora store will give you access to the entire play store and i really do mean the entire play store and the way it does that is it has a built-in mechanism to actually spoof your device so even though i'm doing this on my nvidia shield we can see here I can install applications like WhatsApp, um, like BBC News. These applications that are not typically available on the standard Google Play Store, we can now access all of them with just pretty much one click. Now, when you start the application for the first time, you won't see these applications like this. This is actually what you'll see when you do first log in because it knows that your device is an NVIDIA Shield or an official Android TV device. And then based on that, it then shows you these official Android TV applications. But because we want to access more than that, we just go to the hamburger menu, go to spoof, and here where it says pretend to be your original device, I can click on that. And I now have the option to spoof any of these devices. So I'm gonna go for a Google Pixel 2, click on that, click on apply, let's log out. Now it's a good time to mention that you can actually log in using your own Google credentials. And it is something that I have done before just to prove that it works. Now the reason why you may want to do that is, let's say for example, you purchased an application or a game before, now, whichever account that you used, as long as you log back in using that same account, you can then download the application without any extra charges. But for now, let's go for anonymous. And we can see straight away, guys, we now have access to all these other applications, things like TikTok and uh, Instagram, things that you wouldn't typically get on an Android TV device. We can now install all of them with pretty much one click. So let's say, for example, I want to install uh, this game over here. Click on install and we can see that's now installed OK. Once again, Aurora Store is a fantastic application, gives you access to the entire Play Store, and I highly recommend it. Well, that's all for this video, guys. Many thanks for watching, and many thanks for staying till the end. If you did find this video useful, then do give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more stuff like this, especially on the brand new NVIDIA Shield, or the second generation Fire TV Cube, or any other Android device, then please do hit the like button, and also think about subscribing. Oh, As always, I always appreciate your likes, your shares, your comments, so do let me know what you think leave me a comment below and i'll hopefully catch up with you guys real soon thanks